Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shira and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the recently passed the Insurance Laws Amendment Bill 2015. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. Mukesh Jain, Vice President, Bajaj Capital Insurance, Broking Limited and Mr. Vivek Saxena, Secretary, Oriental Insurance Employees Association. Now for the headlines. The new law hikes foreign direct investment level from existing 26% to 49%. It also allows entry of foreign reinsurers. Agents who do not have the approval of the insurance regulator IRDAI will not be eligible to receive any sort of payouts. The Insurance Laws Amendment Bill 2015 seeks to increase foreign direct investment in the general insurance sector to 49% from existing 26%. The bill also allows entry of foreign reinsurers. Reinsurers are companies that insure insurance companies. The bill makes it mandatory for insurance companies to be registered before starting operation. Health policy seekers may stand to benefit from the proposed changes in the definition of health insurance in the Insurance Laws Amendment Bill. The bill provides for General Insurance Corporation, the National Insurance Company Limited, the New India Assurance Company Limited, Oriental Insurance Company Limited and the United India Insurance Company Limited to raise capital with permission of the central government. More than 80% population is not covered under health insurance or life insurance. So, uh, a lot of uh, things are to be done, in fact, as regard the insurance of uh, to cover uh, everybody under the insurance. Mm. So, this increase in the FDI limit will definitely be very helpful. The Insurance Laws Amendment Bill defines health insurance separately. It includes medical, surgical and hospitalization costs related to inpatient and outpatient treatment. The bill defines the companies established or incorporated under the law of any country outside India as a foreign company. The bill specifies the minimum equity capital that various insurance businesses must maintain. Companies or cooperative societies in the life or general insurance business must have a minimum quality equity capital of 1000 crore rupees while those in health insurance must have a minimum equity capital of 50 crore rupees. The bill provides for policy holders to assign or transfer the rights enjoyed by them to others subject to their certain conditions. The bill expands the window within which the policies can be called into question to three years term. In the case of insurance cancel policy, premium collected must be returned within 90 days. Any insurer who fails to meet their obligations will face a fine of 25 crore rupees. In 1999, what was the fact that they had an agent's regulation IRDNA and they had an act. Before that, agents were only cutting 20 rupees from control of insurance and the agent could be made. So, in the agency in India, it was totally unprofessional at that time. But in the past 15 years, the agency regulation came to it, there was a lot of discipline. A prescribed syllabus, you have to pass the exam to the agents, so there was a professionalism in the agents. And with this amendment, they have finished it. No person shall take out or renew a policy of insurance in respect of any property in India or any ship or any other vessel or aircraft registered in India with an insurer whose principal place of business is outside India. Without the permission of IRDA, he may end up incurring a fine up to 5 crore rupees. Government believes that the empowered IRDA will be able to regulate and monitor all the practices and malpractices of public and private sector insurance companies and maintain balance in the insurance sector. With camera person Ashwini, Rajkamal Rao, Rajya Sabha TV. The life insurance company dominates the life insurance market with 76% share in premium income and 81% in number of policies. Now, both the GIC and the LIC both of these companies, sir, are very sound companies, are really doing well and the most important are working in the social inclusion area. Is there a need for them to go in for foreign capital or foreign direct investment? Uh, there is no need of capital or especially FDI in case of insurance as far as public sector is concerned mm -hmm. whether it is LIC or GIC 
because we don't require funds to invest in uh, plants and machinery or like airlines industry and aeroplanes. We need to take this insurance to the remotest area, which we have already done. Every district headquarter, we have got a, a, a shop or you can say establishment as per the financial inclusion program of the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. uh, we have got 6,000, more than 6,500, around 7,000 uh, uh, offices across the country. And over the past uh, two years, we have opened uh, around 2,000, more than 2,000 single man office mm -hmm. extension counters. So FDI is not required because uh, what implication we will do... Implication of this, implication uh -huh. of 26 to 49 on the... Public, public sector, sector implication will be that our competition will increase because the large insurances which the four companies were doing now private companies because their risk retention capacity will increase they will also be able to do so our competition will increase but we are not fearful of that so there will be more stress on you to perform better there will be more stress that is why we are saying there should be a level playing field the government companies should be given more autonomy. There should not be political directors on our board. There should be professionals on our board. There should be less interference from the ministry. We should be given more autonomy so that we are able to serve the public. What That is our motto. Mandate. Uh, mandate. And we are... Do you think the private sector will be able to serve the purpose of social inclusion with the help of foreign direct investment? I have my own doubts. Because I'll, I'll come. To, I'll, I'll, I'll bring in uh, uh, Mr. Jain. Foreign direct investment for you is music. Yes, to it's your ear ears. To the music, yeah. It, it's music to your ears. Yes. I said. So, which essentially means it's good for the private sector. Yes. How do you see it really helping the private sector? Basically, we believe it's good for both the sectors, private and the private and the government sector, PSU sector, both. For private sector, it brings in the capital inflow, which is very much required to expand the business, to increase the penetration. And this will also help us in the level playing field. The private sector companies have been starving for capital, capital inflow, and they could not get with the, with the market. With this 49% in place, now they will be able to get in capital from the uh, market. And that will help us improving the solvency ratios, expanding the business, opening more offices, and also getting new partners or maybe with a higher share which will certainly bring in the capi capital along with the the technology the new products it will improve your efficiency it will but will it efficiency. serve the purpose of social inclusion yes it will help there also because if you have you would have known that in the past several years there are several private companies which are participating in rasti bima yojana which is also a social inclusion uh, instrument and they are also doing a lot of rural business mm -hmm. so this 49% additional inflow of the capital will help us in tapping more rural business and expanding our business and ultimately the reaching to the masses. The next point is, uh, 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 it is being argued that insurance business being capital intensive, the Indian partners lack resource to expand the business. That is that true for the PSUs? No, it is not true. As I told you earlier, we don't require capital. We have enough funds. In fact, the insurance, public sector insurance companies are driving the stock market. Mm -hmm. We are contributing to the infrastructure development of the country. Recently, LIC has announced 1,50,000 crores they'll be uh, investing in railways. Right. So, we have enough funds. We are investing. We are earning a lot of money through investment. We just want to increase our premium income. What and is the argument for technology upgradation, new uh, way of doing business, these information and knowledge coming in to the insurance business. Do you see that as a threat? Because somewhere or the other, it's going to encroach on your area, or, which is your uh, market area. No, that is not an issue because private sector companies are there in the market for last 15 years mm -hmm. and they are having foreign partners. 26 to 49 26 was not a bar for bringing in the technology or the product uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. It is already there in India and it is very much available with the public sector insurance companies. As far as technology, IT is concerned, we are supposed to be the leader in that. As Oriental Insurance, we are uh, leader in IT and we are uh, having reached through IT the remotest part of the country. 
So do you see this really enhancing employment in the insurance sector? This FDI from 26 to 49, will it really engage more people from Certainly India? yes. Certainly yes. Do you think that is the focus of this uh, bill? This is one of the one of the reasons, one of the triggering factor, one of the incentive which will come along with FDI. Mm -hmm. so people will be able to employ more people because they want expansion, they want to increase the penetration, they want to reach to the masses. So they need the people in all the sectors, whether it's agent, whether it's brokers, whether it's insurance companies, their employees, their marketing force, sales force, everywhere people will need the people. On the technology aspect, how do you see what is it that you will get or the new uh, way of doing business? What is the gain on that part that you think? Yes, if you see the last 15 years period, there was a PSU, there were only four PSU players in the, in the year 2000, uh, about those times. Then the private players came to the market. So they bring a lot of technology, it has a lot of done the improvement to the market. If you see the services, they have improved a lot in the last 10 years, 15 years. Now the time has come to the next, next stage and the, the next phase. The new FDI will bring in more money to the market, so they will be able to further increase and enhance the technology, the product, the innovation, and they will be further superior, further better than what they have been doing in the past, last 10 years. Benefits to the, uh, the person who buys the insurance? Yes. The benefit will be the new product, the new technology, the innovation in the, in the product, and the product which are not available in the market will also be coming in the market. You think there are there are new products that can still come in and that ones that don't exist I, no. now? We already had more than 150 products uh, in our uh, pocket which we are offering. Problem is not those number of products or the technology. Problem is the paying capacity of the public. We have to take it to the remotest corner of the country. We have opened offices where our ME is 1 lakh rupees per month and we are getting a premium of hardly 5,000, 10,000, mm -hmm. which no private company will ever do. Mm -hmm. This can be achieved only through government companies. We are offsetting that uh, cost through other uh, uh, insurances. But private sector uh, company will never do that. It has to be unit-based costing they will be doing. So that penetration over the 15 years, it has not increased much. Hardly there is any difference in the penetration, which can be achieved only through public sector companies. And public sector companies need to be strengthened by the government. Then only penetration will increase and insurance product will reach to the uh, last man in the line. Mass, uh, last man in the line. Yeah. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will talk about the enhanced powers of the insurance regulator IRDA. Welcome back. Agents who do not have the approval of the insurance regulator IRDI will not be eligible to receive any sort of payouts. And if this happens, the insurance company will be held accountable. Government has expanded the role of the regulator IRDA to control private insurance companies, malpractices and protect public sector insurance companies. No person will pay or contract to pay any remuneration or reward by way of commission or otherwise for procuring insurance business in India to any person except an insurance agent authorized by the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority. The insurance bill passed by Parliament has given more teeth to IRDA to maintain level playing field between private and public sector insurance companies. At present, their shareholding is more than 75% because earlier threshold was 24%. Now once it is 49%. So there are two, three options. They bring in additional money that can be by way of additional capital or to some extent existing bank, they may dilute their stake and get that company. And further idea is once they show profits and their balance sheets are good, they may go public also. As per the bill, the method and amount of remuneration paid or received by way of commission to insurance brokers, reinsurance brokers, insurance consultants, cooperative agents, corporate agents and other professionals involved in will be decided by the Insurance Regulatory Development Authority. The bill authorizes IRDA to suspend or cancel the registration of any insurer if the insurer fails to maintain an excess value of assets over the amount of liabilities of not less than 50%. 
or if the authority has reason to believe that any claim upon the insurer arising in India remains unpaid for three months after a final judgment in the regular court of law or insurer fails to pay the annual fee. According to the bill, any transfer merger of two insurance businesses must have the approval of the regulator. It will be mandatory for every insurer transacting insurance business in India to furnish the details of expenses management specified by IRDA. पब्लिक सेक्टर अभी तक जितने बड़े इंश्योरेंस थे वो सिर्फ पब्लिक सेक्टर अभी तक करता रहा है क्योंकि प्राइवेट कंपनीज का रिस्क कैपे जो कैपेसिटी है वो नहीं है तो अभी एफडीए बढ़ने से हम उम्मीद कर रहे हैं वो बढ़ेगा तो अगर वो बढ़ेगा तो पब्लिक सेक्टर का जो बड़े इंश्योरेंस का शेयर है वो कम हो सकता है If a person carries on business of insurance without obtaining a certificate of registration will be liable to a penalty of maximum 25 crore rupees and with imprisonment which may extend to 10 years if any insurer makes investments without keeping a minimum required capital amount to pay back to insurer seekers or makes investments in unauthorized securities will be liable to a penalty not exceeding 25 crore rupees Despite several efforts made by both government and public sector insurance companies insurance penetration levels are at very low in our country government believes and hopes that this 14 percentage increase in FDI will encourage private sector companies to increase the penetration levels in the country with camera person Ashwini Rajkamal Rao Rajesh Sabha TV The bill provides for appeals against decisions by IRDA to lie with the securities of appellate tribunal sat This is in line with the recommendations made by the KP Narasimhan committee since SAT currently deals with issues related to the capital markets only its expertise in dealing with matters of insurance law may be limited now what we are looking at mr jain my question to you is what we are looking at is more powers empowering the ir the regulator the insurance uh, regulator to the extent that it really makes the business environment tough for you there are various checks on all levels where you can take your money where you cannot who you can bring in whom you cannot who will be the trainer who will not and where the appeal lies do you see your advantage of the fdi limit being expanded has been compromised by empowering the regulator actually this is not to be viewed in this way regulator's job is to regulate the industry and to do the development at the same time so if they need some power and some authority it's fine to be given to them but they also have to see that it's it's rational it does not affect the the stakeholders and it's all it anyway contributes to the but they've been given huge powers in this bill actually powers uh, for all the regulators are given all over the world so giving power is not the issue the issue is that the power should be used in for the benefit of the industry for all the stakeholders and the development of the industry as a whole okay uh, the second is the government did not change the management expense which is the clause uh, 40c which uh, yes. he said 19.5 is the management expense quota yes the government not touching that do you see it as good for you because that is where you think you have some leverage to make extra money even if uh, the regulator is really tough now and you've got fdi we don't see a problem there also it 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 basically depend upon the insurance company and the government to decide and the regulator to regulate that mm -hmm. as long as they are happy and comfortable with the limits we are we have no objection to that the only thing that it should not affect the other areas like remuneration to the distribution channels and their other expenses if they can manage within those limits we we are fine with that why did you want why did the psu insurers want that this should be brought down 19.5 management expense should be brought down to a lesser or whatever limit but the government did not change it why do you want that no in this act what they are doing is they are giving this power to irda to change this mm -hmm. but our concern was that this section should be abolished from the act because this was introduced in 1938 when private companies were there there were 108 private companies in uh, general insurance sector at that time in india in 73 mm -hmm. and this act, this section was brought into curtail the management expenses of the private sector to cap it 
to cap it. Hmm. This is not relevant for uh, government of uh, companies and even to private companies in today's context because those solvency margins were not there at that time. Mm -hmm. So those regulations are not were not there, now they are in place. So there is no re relevance of this. So if it is done away with, then the P whether it be the PSU insurer or whether it be the there, private sector, there is they no, can go to any extent to show management expense? No, uh, management expenses, like private sector, there is no uh, problem. Mm -hmm. In public sector, problem is whenever we go for increase in wages, they say your management expenses is high. Mm -hmm. So that comes a, a hindrance in our HR activities, okay. in compensation. Okay. So we wanted that to be removed because there is no relevance. To allow that you is to really basically grow in grow, terms of yeah. human resource and yeah. more uh, yeah. uh, Because value it is ultimately a service industry. Correct. It has to, no technology, nothing is required. It is only human uh, wear which, is, which has to perform. So unless you have a proper HR practices, proper compensation in the companies, you will not uh, get the results. Correct. Um, another, uh, the, the pricing mechanism, anything that you would uh, like to talk about, there is no such uh, uh, point. The management expenses? Uh, no, the pricing mechanism. Yeah. The pricing mechanism is basically a market driven, should be market driven. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a tariff which was uh, uh, abolished some time ago. Now uh, there are companies who are talking about the pricing uh, on burning costs. The regulator also has also recommended the burning cost factor. We think that it's, it's a good idea. It will help uh, companies to price the product in a very rational and very professional way. What, what is your take on this? In India, prior to nationalization, Tariff Advisory Committee was the entity who was doing the pricing, who was collecting the data claims, data, ME, everything, mm -hmm. and they were doing the pricing. Last pricing was done, as I remember, it was in 98 by TSE. Mm -hmm. And with the introduction of the uh, private sector, uh, it was slashed by almost 50% in 1999-2000. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, 2005, 2007, de-tariffing took place. It was called de-tariffing, but it was basically discounting. Okay. Again, discounting. And we are giving discount up to 99% also. So our concern is that we should have a pricing mechanism so that we do not become another airline industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, pricing should be a uh, it market. It has not been addressed. It should be market driven, but mm. not to the extent that the whole industry will not survive. So, it ha has it been addressed or not? No, it has not been addressed because TSE has been abolished by IRDA. Uh -huh. IRDA has constituted an uh, entity called IIB, Insurance Information Bureau. They are collecting the data. But ultimately, pricing, who will be doing, uh, it is not known. And each company should do. In foreign companies, they are doing pricing on weekly basis. Okay. What should be the price of motor insurance next week? They are deciding on this Saturday. But also, also Ms. Uh, I would like to bring you in on uh, the empowerment of IRDA, the regulator. Does that help your cause, the public sector uh, cause, which is the social inclusion mandate that you have? Does that help your clause and a uh, cause and, and does it somehow deter the private sector or try and regulate the private sector to not overtake the PSE? No, uh, IRDA is a regulator, but there are regulators like SEBI, uh, RBI is there, but still Sarda and Sahara cases have been happening, Kingfisher, Spicejet has been happening. In insurance sector also, uh, there was a crop insurance scheme. It is still there. It was done one, by one of the major private sector companies also, but a lot of frauds were there because subsidy was given by the uh, government and that subsidy was eaten away. So mm -hmm. still CBI is uh, doing some inquiry in that. It was there in the mm -hmm. media, out of media reports only I am speaking. So uh, regulator has to be very strict. It is there, but regulator should be unbiased. Neither it should be in the favor of private sector, nor it should be in the favor of the public sector. Uh, one example I'll quote, when this uh, broker uh, regulation was brought in, before that, there was a provision of 5% discount to the direct uh, public. And if you come as a direct uh, customer, we will give you 5%. But that was withdrawn by the IRDA. 
okay. which we think is not in the interest of the public. But that's an ongoing process of evolution yeah. that the insurance sector right. will have to uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, moving on, sir, the bill provides for appeals against decision by RDA to lie with the securities appellate tribunal SAT. This is in line with the recommendations made by the KP Narasimhan Committee. Since SAT currently deals with the issue related to the capital markets only, it is expertise in dealing with matters of insurance law may be limited. Moving on, my colleague Raj Kamal Rao spoke to Mr. A.K. Narang, Vice President, Insurance Brokers Association of India, and tried to get his point of view. Basically, there are many representations made by uh, intermediaries and agents. Okay, the commission paid in this uh, segment are not matching the work done by them. And there is also not security. If a person is earning and once he is not able to do that business, so he is not getting that renewal commission because he is, when he is earning, he is getting. So, this uh, uh, attracts that there must be some uh, attraction to the sales force, whether it is agent or the broker or any other means are used. So, they can uh, focus on it and give it proper delivery of the services. Thank you, sir, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.